Hello, I'm Full Paragon, and this is the Tier List Update for Konosuba Fantastic Days Global for October 2022. First up for our new units, we have the Festival Kazuma banner with Festival Kazuma himself. He is a stellar unit with extremely long legs. His lightning typed basic along with the conditionals on his skills and of course the tier 3 defense down and tier 2 self agility buff mean that he is going to be the absolute pinnacle of the lightning meta for quite some time to come. He's even still meta in Japan a year and a half ahead of us. As for Ainumiya, she won't have quite the same length of time where she's meta, but a tier 2 agility buff, a debuff block ability, and of course her alt which could provide either a tier 3 agility down or a tier 3 physical attack and physical defense buff means that she too will be meta and goes into S tier. As for Aino Amy, unfortunately she's a defensive healer and she's a mage in an increasingly physical world. She's off meta in B tier. As for the Welfare Chris, she's a pretty great Welfare, a tier 1 agility buff and a tier 2 defense debuff on her skills, along with Chris's pretty great alts means that Welfare players will get a lot of use out of her. But Aino Mia does everything she can do better so she's in B tier. Next up is the first of our ninja banners from last month featuring Ninja Chris. She's the water weakness unit, which naturally means she'll go into S tier, where she will remain until we get Summer La Lisa for Summer 3 next year. Ninja Amy is an extremely mediocre healer. She's going to be in B or C tier. She's just not worth using. The same goes for the Welfare Megumi. She has double single target skills, and since Megumi's job is wave clear, that just doesn't cut it. So she's off meta in C tier. As for the second of the ninja banners, these units just aren't any good at all. First is Ninja Cecily, and since she's Cecily, she'll go into C tier because Cecily is awful. Then we have Ninja Rin. She's actually pretty good. She has a fairly strong kit, and having a dark typed ultimate makes a dark Rin unit a very attractive one. But the welfare dark Rin is just better. Her kit has a self agility buff along with a much more relevant attack debuff instead of a defense debuff on the boss, something that will probably be overwritten by a stronger tier 3 defense down, so she's just not worth using. As for the welfare Melissa, she's not as good as the original Missla, who long ago lost her luster. None of these units are ever going to see any usage, they're all in B or C. As for the individual elemental tier lists, Fire has seen a real shift. More and more, Fire physical teams are where it's at especially in the last arena where the debuff block from Ainu Mia was absolutely vital. That's not to say that mages can't still compete, and they definitely did, but at least in that arena, physical was superior. I think we'll continue to see fire mages be a force in the meta, but fire physical has definitely caught up to them, and in some cases, it will be superior. Some fire units did go down, like Fire Mitsurugi, who just isn't as good as Ainu Mia as he has a tier 1 agility buff, versus that tier 2 agility buff, but overall expect fire still to be the element of explosions and railgun with Christmas Wiz empowering a very strong mage lineup. The water meta of course saw the completion of the water trio, who will completely dominate arena for the foreseeable future. You're gonna see Godqua, Ninja Chris, and Erika pretty much in every single water arena. In the case of Godqua, you're gonna see her a lot more than that as she's just an incredibly powerful support unit by far the best in the game and she's going to fuel teams in a variety of off element compositions. There is a little bit of room aside from them in the water meta. You will occasionally see Valentine's Iris, Valentine's Leah, and even Summer Mitsurugi show up in teams from time to time. Summer Mitsurugi is good because he has debuff block. Valentine's Leah is great because of that water typed alt that has a lot of cooldown cut. And as for Valentine's Iris, as usual, she'll take up the R5 slot, although she'll shortly be giving that crown up to Komeko, who will have a water-type trait which will drastically increase the damage of your team. That does leave the fourth slot up for grabs, assuming you're not running a Megamine, so these units will still see occasional metal usage. The Lightning Element saw a great deal of change, with Kazuma taking over the top slot in the Lightning meta, where he will remain for quite some time. Since both he and Meru, who is the Lightning Weakness unit we will be getting towards the end of October, are both physical units, expect the mages to fall into the off-meta category, while units like Mitsurugi or Snow Chris, who complement them well, will continue to see more and more usage. 
it's sort of up for grabs as to whether Chris or Mitsurugi will be the one providing the tier 3 attack buff for your team, and we'll have to wait and see who wins out in the end. I have a feeling it's going to be Mitsurugi, his ult offers some much needed recovery options for the otherwise fragile lightning team, but we'll have to see. For the mages, expect them to all end up in B tier as they just can't compete with the power of Cosma and Meru. The Earth meta has been the longest firmly in the grip of physical, and that is not going to be changing anytime soon. Even when we get Vanir, he'll mostly just be along for the ride as he provides a self magic buff, but you're still gonna want to use Aunts and Melissa and of course Summer Chris, as they have the most powerful kits by far available to Earth. In the meantime, I would expect to see units like Bunny Mitsurugi or the Welfare Mitsurugi providing a tier 3 physical attack up for Chris or Melissa. You can also use Kazuma for snipe and have Chris on buffing duty, or you can try Leah as her tier 2 agility buff for the team and damage cut can be quite useful. Iris can also go in the last slot, and of course, New Year Megamine is still a great way to clear waves and then get off a nice explosion on the boss. Earth won't be changing too much in the near future, but once we get Festival Chris, expect it to alter drastically. Wind is going to remain the same. Baldzuma and Eyes are just too strong to compete with in any way, shape, or form. Lately, they've been joined by Godqua to keep Eyes healthy and fuel her massive damage potential. I think that's going to remain that way until we get Festival Chris. Hopefully she'll be delayed from December, but if she does come then, she will just be run alongside Kazuma as the optimum team. The other meta units are Wind Iris, who does great in the rear 5 slot, along with Rin for the same reason. She might be a mage, but the pure wind damage potential she has thanks to her personal weapon is pretty great. Mitsurugi can be run on occasion, as can Kenpo Erika, but they're not anywhere near the same power level as the other units. Light has remained fairly stable. This latest arena, where it could be run as alongside water units, showed the disparity between the water trio and basically anyone else, as light is also a fairly strong element. Still, in arenas where you're only running light units, you have your choice between physical units running Don Machi Aqua and Darkness, or the mages running Union along with Light Aru and Maid Rin. Both of those teams have their merits and can be quite strong, but it will depend on the boss mechanics and which arena will be best. Until we get Shaltir with Overlord. That will probably come in November, and I expect Shaltir to really flip the light meta on its head, as she's insanely powerful, much like Bestia Aqua. She's a collab unit you will really need to be running if you want to do well in light arena. Then we have the Dark Element. The Dark Element is basically waiting for Ainz. He is incredibly powerful, and he's going to toss quite a few units out of the meta by his sheer force of will. I think that he will need Union still, as she's the only real tier 3 attack buffer that will work with him, as he's a Lich and Amy won't do anything for him. For now though, I expect to see the mages still winning out with occasional showings from PJ Mia thanks to her massive gauge charge and tanking and healing potential. But Dark is another element that will be flipped on its head by powerful collab units. That brings us to the total meta picture you see here. The meta-defining units continue to be Idol Kazuma, Godqua, ReZero Megamine for nearly a year now, and of course, Eyes. Those four will stay at the top of the meta for at least a little while longer, but they are waiting on Maid, Leah, and Festival Chris to upset things. The top of the meta units and the various elements can see some cross-elemental usage. I would expect to see Bestia Aqua showing up off the element much less, as you can't run her alongside Godqua. But the weakness units have all shown themselves to be quite powerful, and I think Ainu Mia will be doing the same thing. As for the off-meta units, well, some old favorites are finally starting to show their age. The biggest victim of this are units like Amelia and even El Silo. They just can't continue to compete with the increasingly powerful units that we are seeing released. The other usual suspects are here as well, of course. There isn't a single Cecily or Dust outside of B tier, and I don't think it will be anytime soon that we see Dust rise up, although perhaps in the winter or spring we'll get a Cecily that will finally prove she's not entirely worthless, just entirely insane. That's the video, thanks for watching. Unfortunately, I won't be able to do any streams for the next couple of weeks. I've got some family visiting and will be spending time with them. 
I'll still try and do some banner videos and arena guides, but expect my output to be somewhat reduced. Still, I hope this has been useful for you, and if you tune back in soon, I hope to provide you with more Konosuba Fantastic Days videos and guides.